Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today we're gonna do a requested updates video. I didn't do one of these in a lot of time, so I have a big list of orchids that you guys want to see some updates on. I don't know if I can do them all today, but I will try at least the most important ones. So without further ado, let us start with I think one of the most requested orchids. And this would be the Selogeny Cristata. So let me get you in a little closer. Now, if you don't really know what happened to this orchid, check the description down below. Of course, I will add a link. We worked on this orchid. Basically, it suffered a very, very bad rotting or fungal infection. I lost most of the pseudobulbs. They just rotted away. So I had to pretty much hack away at the orchid until I was left with only a few pseudobulbs. That, of course, didn't have massive root systems. And overall, the situation was pretty horrible with this orchid. But she's still alive, as you can see, very, very, well, poor, set back. The new growth is really small, and I think if I do this, you will see it better. Sorry about the light. It appears that today the people were noisy in the morning, but kind of quiet in the afternoon. So today we have sun to film. But anyway, as you can see, we have new growth that is really, really tiny, and um, we don't have much roots. To be fairly honest, she is anchored, but the root system is not in great, great shape. Due to the fact that I have a lot of algae in the pot, I cannot really see the roots. But judging by how wobbly the orchid is, I suspect I don't have a massive, massive root system. However, you can see the pseudobulbs are pretty plump. They're not shriveled. They were very shriveled, so that's good. It means we still have some roots, but I have a funny suspicion this orchid might be suffering from fusarium. At this point, you know, it's either she overcomes it or not. And uh, yeah, well, the fact that she's still alive is a good thing but I don't keep my hopes high to seeing this one in perfect condition anytime soon. It will take a while, but it's okay. I'm still going to keep her, but to be fully, fully, fully honest with you guys, I'm not entirely sure that I would want to purchase it again because it's a very, very big orchid and it only blooms once a year and the blooms don't really last all that long. And this particular one was not fragrant. I purchased it believing it's gonna be fragrant. I was a little disappointed. Not all the Cristadas are fragrant. So at this point, I'm not entirely sure that I wanna repurchase it. Since I already have experience with it, I saw it in bloom and I wasn't blown away and it just takes a lot of sp Anyway, it's one of those orchids that I'm not sure I wanna repurchase, but I will not throw this away until it's completely dead. And so far it looks okay. So that's the update on this orchid. Next up, somebody wanted to see my Arendus orchids. You might remember I had two, the Citrata or Citrina and the Biloba or Biloba. I only have one left. The other one, the Citrata, something happened to it. Um, I think it was Fusarium, but it didn't actually create any new leaf. It slowly faded away, although it had roots. So that's why I'm saying maybe it was Fusarium because I cannot really explain why it got dehydrated and just declined without any particular reason. However, I do still have the Biloba and it's looking so pretty. It is currently actively growing roots. I switched it to this tiny little pot because I just like the pot better and it has a nice color. It goes well on my white shelf. And this is actually an orchid that I purchased a year and a bit ago. And it was a young plant. It wasn't fully mature yet, if I remember correctly. And I think it got, look at that leaf span. She's pretty big right now. So, honey, I'm expecting you to bloom anytime soon, right? Well, she's busy creating the new leaf, as you can see. Everything else looks good. Um, and yeah, everything looks okay. I just don't see any flower spike just yet, but it's okay. It's only been a year. I think she just reached maturity or flowering size and she's actually doing really, really well. I'm considering buying the Rhodosticti as well, which I had a long, long time ago. I just lost it. I don't remember why. I lost it somehow. And I had a different one with more fleshy leaves that I cannot remember. They did beautifully for me until I put them in that very bad medium. So yeah, this is old story. And I want to have, oh gosh, what was the name? I want to have two A-ranges, the Rhodosticta and the other one that I used to have, but I want to find them in very, very decent and good shape. The Rhodosticta, I still saw it for sale on eBay and at nurseries, but I didn't like how it looked like. It was very, very tiny. It is a tiny orchid anyway, but I'm looking for something else. But anyway, yeah, with the A-ranges, I'm okay. I would purchase more. I love A-ranges. Uh, hopefully they will love me back. The Biloba so far, she appears to love me, but sadly it's the only one that I still have. 
Just a little side note, I'm actually filming close to my uh, Sideria Japonica cross, to the little one. Remember I told you it smells like heavy honey, super sweet honey? Yeah, it smells like that, but right now it actually smells exactly like the Sideria Japonica, which is that nice citrusy, lemony or lemon pie fragrance. Oh my goodness, it's so mouthwatering, I love it. And somebody actually commented that their orchid smells both like honey, but also like the Sideria. And I was like, I wish mine smelled like the Sideria as well, because I love the smell of the Sideria. Uh, it never did, now it does. Granted, I rarely come this close to it at this hour. It's one o'clock right now, I think. Is it? Yes, it's 1.03. So at this hour, I'm actually having lunch or editing or doing something of the sorts. I'm not in the greenhouse, let alone filming. It's very noisy. Uh, so I actually never smelled her at this hour, I think. It does, it smells like the Sideria. I am so incredibly happy right now. So I'll make sure to update the fragrance and the information for this orchid when I do my What's in Bloom video for the month. But there you go, a little update on the little one, Vandopirea or the Phalaenopsis or whatever it's called now. It smells like the Sideria as well, apparently not in the morning or in the evening, uh, but at one o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> Somebody asked me, how are my Bulbophyllums? And since we worked with the Echnolabium not long ago, I repotted it, and you can check the video down below, you can see how he is, nothing changed. I filmed that two weeks ago or something. Let me show you how the Elizabeth and Buckleberry is doing. Currently, he's sitting here on my shelf, I did a little bit of a improvised corner here for some of my orchids that don't really require Vanda Catlia light necessarily, but do require brighter light. So I have here uh, mainly the Dendrobium nobilis, but also I put the Bulbophyllum as well, which I repotted in this basket or um, bowl, if you will, although I purchased it from the flower shop. And he is in semi-hydro and he's growing a new shoot, which you cannot really see, let me get you in closer. So first, let's address the obvious. For those of you who skipped the video with the inflorescence, yes, uh, because I don't actually soak my Leca, they do make this thing on the top, and this was repotted not long ago. Whatever you see here is some sort of salt deposit. I suspect it's calcium. It goes away after I properly uh, flush the pot, and it doesn't really affect the roots. So that's what that is. And I think it happens if you don't properly soak your Leca, which I don't, you might know I just rinse it off and then when this happens I just completely flush the pot and everything is okay. Works for me, I'm not saying you should do it. But there we go, this is how the Elizabeth and Buckleberry is doing. These growths, side growths, don't seem to produce any new growth. So it's a shame, I'm still hoping for it to branch out a little more effective than this, but I am enjoying this new growth which is rooting as you can see right now. It is maturing. And what I want to do with this guy is train it to pretty much grow in the entirety of this basket. I know it will start to grow overboard, but that's the tendency of the circuit. I am trying to train it somehow, but I'm sure I'm not going to do a spectacular job at it. So hopefully whatever roots will be in the pot will be enough to sustain the entire orchid. But bulbophyllums are known to just be unruly, to crawl on the medium and eventually grow out of the pot. Hey, what to do? As long as you're happy, I'm happy, honey. Somebody wanted to see my Ascofinetia peaches, which is so funny. I didn't think you would remember I still had this one, or actually that I purchased this one. Already the story behind this one, if you don't know, I purchased it from a seller that I didn't name and I'm still not gonna name because I'm not sure. He has very, very good reviews. It's just that his orchids are very, very, very expensive compared to other things on eBay. And not only, he has a lot of orchids. They're beautiful. They just don't have proper names. This one had, I don't know, something with the rainbow. So pretty much you don't necessarily know the proper name of the orchid you're purchasing. I had my doubts considering it's just so expensive, so I decided, you know what, I'm gonna purchase, see how it is, see if it blooms the way it's supposed to bloom in pictures, because I saw the same picture to multiple orchids, and that's again something that scared me. But what happened was, what I believe is the Ascofinetia peaches, suffered from a disease or something. You might not remember, but this one was very, very bushy. What happened was that the crowns started to get affected by a fungal disease and pretty much they all died. The crowns were affected. It kind of looked like crown rot, but all of the five crowns were affected at the same time shortly after it arrived to me. So I'm not entirely sure what she suffered from. I saved this cakey and now I'm seeing it has a little spot here as well. So I will have to cut that 
and yeah i don't know but that's what's left from my ascofinadia peaches i don't know what to say i'm not sure i want to order again uh maybe it's just bad luck and i'm not very happy with how it went other than that the orchid is actually doing great she's growing roots she looks great otherwise but we have that issue there you see it Yep, that looks exactly like what the crowns had and not not actually the crowns the stem the stem here was affected towards the top and um, Sadly the other growths perished This is the only one I still have and I'll keep an eye out on this because last time I watered this one it was not there That's not funny to see Next up, somebody wanted to see my maxillaria orchids and I have two of them one is actually called Brasiliorchis now, but whatever the name might be, they used to be maxillarias at some point. So, do you remember this one? This is the little monster that Roger sent me last year. This is the Maxillaria tenufolia. She was dehydrated for most of last year, the poor thing, but now she is plump. And she also managed to bloom. I have two buds this year. I can see one here. Do you see it? And also I saw another one here. This is another bud here. So I will have two flowers at least from this one as far as I can see I'm not sure about the other growths But yeah, she's doing okay. She just bounced back and I'm suspecting uh, this year She will do much better than last year. This one kind of split into a few sections But she is doing a lot lot better now. You can see these pseudobulbs are really plump I'm just not expecting it to bloom fully this year, but next year it is a monster of an orchid and I love it and I cannot wait to smell it again and remind myself of that really beautiful coconutty and peachy to me actually fragrance. So yeah, this is the Tenofolia and I do have another one. This is the former uh, Maxillaria Shunkiana, currently Brasiliorchis Shunkiana, the blackish or very dark colored Maxillaria. This is how she is, she's growing one new growth here and another one in the back and hopefully she's gonna bloom again. Last year she produced the very first bloom, I purchased her as a younger plant. She produced her very first bloom last year and it wasn't very black to be fully honest with you, very dark in comparison. Oh, there we go, that's the noise I know, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, but yeah, she produced a pretty dark purple flower which was not super super impressive. But hey, she's young. We'll see this year if she decides to bloom, hopefully, how the flowers will look like. And lastly, somebody wanted to see my Paphiopetalums. And since you wanted me to make a full update on the paths, and I'm actually trying out some stuff, I'm experimenting some stuff, I will do a separate video on the paths. Uh, but they're doing okay. They look okay. I'm just trying out some stuff. I just wanted to show you guys that guy in the back there. He is the Philippinensis. Look at that, he has a flower spike. I'm so happy because this guy produces multiple flowers and they are those type of flowers which are big and showy um, and it's just, yeah, it's very nice. I'm actually very excited about it. But regarding the paths, as I think I said in the past, the green ones do a lot, a lot better for me than the, uh, let's call them modeled ones. So I'm trying something out, trying some new medium with these guys. I don't really think that semi-hydro is necessarily the best thing for them. I read some stuff on the internet, other people have issues with these particular ones, the um, modier types or the modeled ones. So it might just be that semi-hydro might not be particularly great for them. So I'm trying out some more terrestrial type of mix and see how they're doing. But I also have them in semi-hydro. I want to eventually try to make a comparison between how they grow in a terrestrial mix and how they grow in semi-hydro. But the green-leaved ones, I do have quite a bit of success. I like how things are growing. But I will talk more about them in a separate video dedicated to them. And yes, I don't think this month, but definitely next month we'll have that guy in bloom and it's just so exciting. It's the first time that I see one of the more special, let's say, type or species of paths, which is just... Oh, it's great. It never was very very good with paths or had spectacular results with them. I never actually tried. I didn't buy myself too many paths. They grow very slow. But yeah, now that I do, I'm kind of excited. And can you see? We have stripes. So exciting. But yeah, my paths are okay, but there's a bit to talk about them. 
And that's about it for today with the requested updates. We'll do more of these. And of course, if you have requests, if you want to see some orchids which you didn't see in a long, long time or that we worked with recently, uh, let me know down below. And next time I'll try to feature them. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, little update. And you know the drill. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye.